Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hi hey everyone, Sue here from 1A Auto, and today we have a 2011 Hyundai Sonata in the shop, and it has a steering clunk, pretty common, and it ends up being this nice rubber steering coupler is what they call it. We're going to show you how to take your steering column out and replace it. If you need any parts for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. So first thing you're going to do whenever you're working with electrical equipment, such as airbags, um, the ignition, is we're going to open the hood and we're going to disconnect that negative battery cable. Safety latch is right in the center. 10 millimeter wrench or socket. We're going to disconnect this negative terminal. This manufacturer recommends that you wait 30 seconds before disconnecting any electrical connectors. I say play it safe and do two minutes. So now the battery's disconnected and it's been longer than 30 seconds. So that way the airbag module doesn't deploy by accident. And the directions say to take the airbag out, steering wheel off. Um, we're gonna try to do it a little bit faster way. And it's basically, I'm gonna put the key in the on position. There's no battery, so it won't turn on. And I'm gonna turn the steering wheel. We'll take this one screw out. And then I'm gonna turn the wheel 180 this way. And there's the exact same screw on this side. I'm going to center the steering wheel again. You want to make sure that's as centered as possible. Now it's a tilt steering wheel, so I'm going to loosen it up. And now I can grab this top steering column plastic cover and pop it up. Probably going to take a body trim tool, get in there and pop it up. set that aside. So we'll take the side panel off. Now we can see the, we've got a Phillips screw here, here. We'll take those two out first. Here's a shorter stubby screwdriver. Take the fuse panel cover off. And we'll see what we got here. Get one more Phillips screw. One over here. I'm gonna grab this panel. Push down on these clips. Disconnect all the electrical. millimeter socket we're going to disconnect this panel the metal bracket it's like the knee knee panel I like to keep all the bolts and nuts together with the item now a Phillips screwdriver. I have one last bolt on the column cover down below here. And pull down on the tilt. Now I can pull this cover off. So now I'm going to undo the fuse box harness that's going to be in the way. This is a pull down on this lever. Pull that out of there. We've got a little tab here. So I'm going to get a body tool, pull that right out, and use a metal body tool. There we go. Now we have the 
It's a clock spring connector. Part of the airbag system. If you see yellow, it's always the airbag. So pay attention, make sure that you have the battery disconnected whenever you disconnect that or reconnect it. Ignition switch. And last but not least is up here. A wiper control. If you can't get to something, it's okay to leave it attached until you drop the steering column down to get a better view. I'd rather have you do that than pull and force a harness. So now, down below here, I'm gonna disconnect the steering column shaft. Okay, 14 millimeter socket. And break that mounting bolt free. Never use a hammer on any sort of steering column mechanism. There is a, you know, for accidental, they have crash compression style shafts. And if you use hammers on them, it does damage. Okay, and there's the column where it attaches to the steering wheel. Now that can come down. I'm just gonna put the bolt right back in so I know where it is. Now I'm just going to take this Phillips screw out. This is the actual vent opening that goes to your feet for your heat and your AC. Just grab it, pull it right out. Now we're going to take the four mounting bolts that mount the steering column to the body. And there's four of them, two on each side. Two in the front here, closest to the steering wheel are studs with nuts on them. This is a 12 millimeter socket. Place those aside. Let's go on this side. I'm gonna leave that one partially in. So as I do this and it falls down. Don't forget you still have well, at least I do. I have some of the harnesses still connected, so I'm going to pay attention to that. And another thing about the steering wheel is it has a thing called a clock spring in it. And that activates the airbag. This steering wheel cannot turn more than what it's supposed to turn. And if that means that this factory wheel does a turn and a half, and that's its max, if I let it go past that, it can rip the steering clock spring. So if you need to put your key back in, and lock the steering wheel, then you should do it. The steering wheel's locked. Okay, now I'm gonna let it come down. Now I can see my electrical a lot easier to get to. And I'm gonna take this right out of here. Take this off this angle. Now we have this power box right here. Now I can see this clip. Push down, pull that out. This is what we're getting at right here. So. Let's take this last clip out. So that's a safety lock. I'll put it back in now. So in the future, when I go to attach it, I just connect it right in. All right, let's bring it out on the bench. So we're gonna now disconnect the actual electrical motor. And it's a T30 Torx bit, and there's three of them.
Okay, I think I'm gonna place it back down so there's nothing that falls out. Lift it up, and there it is. So here's the new one, and here's the old one. Very common with this vehicle. Now with the shop air, I'm just gonna blow the plastic particles out. And what doesn't come out, I'm gonna have to wipe down with a brush. A real clean brush, not a wire brush. Only because it's an electrical motor, and I don't, you know, you wanna do minimal damage. You might have to take a pocket screwdriver and see if you can get some of the heavy particles off. I would not recommend spraying any sort of chemical directly on there. All right, I'm gonna place the new one right down in here. There's no top or bottom to it, it's the same. Just push it right down in there. There you go. Take my T30, I'm just gonna hand tighten them, bottom them out and torque them to specs of 8.7 foot-pounds. Now install the reverse procedure and I'm gonna put the column back in, but I wanted you to be able to see the cutout where the bolt goes. This is where that steering knuckle with the U-joint goes. So there's two cutouts, there's one here and one here. So the yoke should line right up with either one of those because I haven't turned the steering wheel and I haven't turned the yoke. So just make sure you, the splines are lined up so that the bolt will go in clearly on either side. So this is the steering shaft that I'm talking about. And we can see that the bolt is on the bottom part of it. I'm gonna line this up. And first thing I'm gonna do is try to bring the, the top in here so that I can put the nut on there. All right. There we go. I'm just snugging it. You want there still to be movement so that you can definitely line up all the bolt holes. Once again, I'm just snugging it. I know that this column, this wiring harness goes up through the center. I can connect this right now in the module. I'm gonna fall the uh, Follow my harness up. And that's the airbag harness. Ignition. I like to leave the column loose so I make sure everything lines up in place before I snug it down. Okay. Now I'm gonna put the, put this up in place. And that goes over here. Now here comes the steering shaft. So I'm lining the splines up and I'm gonna lift that shaft up and slide it right on. Now I'll know if it's, whether it's one spline off if the bolt does not go in. 
So now I've got that bolt started by hand and it's all lined up perfectly. I'm gonna get my ratchet wrench, snug it down. There's a nice long ratchet. Make sure I bottom that out nice and tight. Now I'm gonna tighten up the four mounting bolts of the steering column to the body. I'm gonna go opposite ends of each other. I'm gonna get a longer ratchet and really snug it up. Now we're ready to connect the rest of our wires. So this slides right in and then you pull this. It starts down on the bottom and it goes up to the lock position. This goes to our kick panel. So now we can put our steering column housings on. I'll get up there and get the wiper connector. There you go. Make sure you have everything click in. We'll place the top down in first. Then we'll grab the bottom one. Make sure the key is out. There we go. Put the bottom mounting screw in first. Let's put our heating vent back up. You'll see the connector where it connects right in there. It goes, it's so easy. It's like, it's fitted. That's why it's easy. And I'll put the mounting screw in. And that's a Phillips. All right, now we can put the metal part of the kick panel back. So you have a hook right here that's gonna line up over there, and then you have a stud on this side. So the hook goes right up into that body piece, and then the stud lines up over here. And you can put a bolt in. I'm just gonna put that right, snug it right down with my fingers. And then the nut right over here. And I'll put the other three in. With my 10 millimeter socket, I'm gonna snug these all up. Okay, that's all set. Let's get ready to put the kick panel up. Let's hook up the, the OBD2 connector. That just pops right back into the bracket. Here, click this connector. And now I'm gonna put these two up in before I guide the plastic into place. There we go. Now I'm going to line up all the plastic keyways and then slide the housings right in. Okay. And we get one, two, three, four screws and then two for the steering column. Two for the steering column are going to be two flat ones and then the two flat ones over here for the side of the door panel and these two with the hex on them will go down below here. On there. Let me get this, this one. And then the bottom one right here. Now we can put that side panel on and align these two tabs up with the two tabs that are up in there. 
making sure I get the rubber seal out of the way. Snap it down. If the seal decides to bend a little bit, so just take a nice body tool and start from up here with it. Bring it down. Perfect. Put our fuse box cover back on. And now I'm going to put the key in so I can turn the steering wheel and put those two screws in. Just line it up. Sign your steering wheel back out. Now make sure you turn your key in the off position and key out because now we're ready to connect the battery and make sure no airbag lights and all our lights work. Grab your terminal, place it on, make sure it's snug down. I'm an advocate of that. Make sure you can see part of the terminal stud sticking up on the top. 10, 10 millimeter. Tighten it. No play. Now let's start the car up. E-brakes off. Looks like I need to get some gas. Nice and smooth. Look at that. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.